question is from Cam Webb One. How long should you stay in a specific rep range? Should you be switching it up weekly, shorter, or longer? So, a uh, really common question. Now, one answer that I've heard often that I I can see the value in, but I also disagree slightly with, is to stick in a rep range until your body stops responding. I get the rationale behind that. There's some value to it, but here's why I tend to disagree with that. Once you hit a plateau in your training, getting out of a plateau can be a little bit of a of a difficult thing. Can well, kind of be a part not of it, to mention it's, ass. not to mention it. It's like on a spectrum, right? So it's like when you hit the hard plateau, you were your progress was already starting to slow down. Yes, leading up to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. in the, in the perfect world, you know, and of course there's gonna, there's going to be an individual variance with everybody, right? With this, but in a perfect world, you're transitioning out of a rep range after you've peaked, right? You've peaked yes. and seen the max results from that rep range, and then you're transitioning to another rep. Before rep, the plateau. Yeah, before, well before the plateau even, right? Yep. And so you're probably trying to – you want to land somewhere between plateau time and peak and somewhere in there. And that's why we've we've geared most of our programs in that three- to four-week range. And you know, some studies will show that it's – up to six weeks where people are seeing phenomenal results from a rep range or a a program before they have to transition out. But we find that kind of sweet spot. And it's, of course, again, there's- The challenge there is the mental discipline part of it. Like to be able to then transition before, right as you're feeling like you're just in the groove, like you do hit that- Absolutely. You do hit that peak, you know, and it, it's contagious. You know? uh, it's I like, would I'm say- I'm good at this now. Well, wouldn't you guys say that this is, uh, we do this all the time. We And we admittedly say this. Totally. Like getting stuck in a, in a phase where- you know, you're getting strong and you hit a PR and it's like, oh, next week I want to do it again. Oh, my God, I'm seeing more strength gains. And you get addicted to that. And it, more often than not, we probably stay in rep ranges longer than we should, especially when we know that sweet spot is somewhere between that three to six week range. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can get addicted to the to the sweat and the pump that you get from high reps or supersets. You can get addicted to the strength uh, that you get from the, the low reps. Um, you know, I tend to get stuck in the low rep range, but for in my experience working with most people, I would say around three weeks typically yeah. is when you'd want to switch. It's now, around three weeks. I think it's important though that we we talk about what the studies show and then why we recommend that way because the studies will show that it's it's almost exactly the same. Somebody who phases every three to six weeks versus somebody who is changing every single day. Yeah. So like Monday low reps, Wednesday you know higher reps versus. Uh, somebody who goes low reps for three weeks and then switches to high reps right. for so three weeks. Right, so the studies will show that those two people are about the same. Yes. There's not much of a difference. So um, that that's what we know, and that's where someone will come back and be like, oh, the studies show this. Well, here's that's true, but what I have found training so many people for so long is that when you do that, it's really hard to see what you're getting the best responses to, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. why, I, it out. why I like block training, okay, and, and doing it that way is staying consistent with it for a little bit gives us enough time to kind of like, oh, okay, wow, I noticed I, when I transitioned to this rep range, I'd seen all these benefits. And it's easier for you to attach things to a way of training for your body. I think it just gives you – it's better data for you to get feedback and learn about your body and how it responds to ways of training versus – you know, muscle confusion, you know, theory of just throwing different exercises, different rep ranges all the time. Every week you're, you're constantly, you know, quote unquote, confusing the body. And what ends up happening is, okay, sure. You see good results, fat loss and muscle building over the course of six months. But then if you ask that person, well, you know, what do you benefit the most from is, do you benefit the most from low rep ranges, high rep ranges, or do you notice that you get inflammation when you train this way? Or do you notice you get achy joints when you train that way? Or, you know, they can't answer that because they have so much inconsistency with the way that they train that they, they have a hard time isolating uh, how their body is responding. Yes. And now the other reason why I support the blocks is because the there's a different mental space that goes into training in different rep ranges. Like if I'm going to the gym and I'm training in the, the four or five right, a good point rep too. range with longer rest periods, it's, it's, it's a different uh, mental state. I'm going in there lift heavy. I'm my rest periods are longer. I'm not focused on the pump. I really don't care about that. It's about moving the weight. It's not as much about feeling the muscle as much as it is perfecting the form and maximizing, 
you know, my leverage and biomechanics uh, to get the most weight up. High reps, I'm going in there. I'm not, don't give a shit about how much weight I'm lifting. I'm about feeling the muscle, getting the pump. I'm keeping my heart rate up. It's a completely different feel. And when I've trained clients, I've found that if I keep them in a block, it gets them to do a better job training in that rep Such range. Such a good point. Because they're consistent with it. Such they, a good point. They get really good at low rep training. They get to practice all the elements of training besides the reps themselves. It's that that state of mind that they get to practice more consistently. Yeah. Um, and so it just has more value for most people. Now, if you're advanced, like if you've been training for a long time and you're super advanced, that's fine. You can train, change your rep ranges, uh, you know, each workout, and you're probably okay because you know your body. You know, but most people aren't like that. Most people are beginner to intermediate. Most people mm-hmm. are not in that unconscious competent stage. In which case, I would say stay in the rep range for you know three, four weeks, and then move out. And, and each time you're in there, get really good at that rep range, and then move to the next one and practice that one and get really good at that one. 